Hey photographers, this is the Fujifilm X-T5 and I am breathing a sigh of relief. This is the camera that Fujifilm fans have been waiting for in 2022. We've been teased by the X-H2 and the X-H2S. This is the camera we really want. Not two, but five. Fifth generation processor and the fifth generation sensor. And that sensor, the same one used in the X-H2, packs 40 megapixels of back illuminated APS-C sized X-Trans quality. Pop the bubbly. Well, or rather, go out and take some photos. Uh, the X-T5 is on loan from Fujifilm Canada, but they didn't pay me or review the script or the video before posting. Some highlights of the fifth generation sensor and processor. Base ISO is down to 125. Shutter durations as short as 1 over 180,000. Seven stops of five axis stabilization. Improved faster autofocus with more subject detection options. Video up to 6.2K 16 by 9. 10-bit 422 using H.265 with data rates up to 360 megabits. F-Log, F-Log 2 and hybrid log gamma. HDMI out. Impressive. But the sigh of relief really comes from the controls. This is the camera that offers the best and easiest combination of auto and manual controls with dedicated physical dials for selecting shutter duration and ISO, uh, both of which can also be automated by selecting the A position. No PASM dial needed. <laughs> now, add an XF lens like this XF 16 to 55, and aperture is similarly controlled. Now that means you select the exposure setting you want to control or to automate. Simple, intuitive, that's Fujifilm superpower. And if that's all you need to know, thanks for watching. <laughs> or stick around. Uh, I'll go through the features and capabilities in, uh, well, a lot more detail in this video. And I'll post a few more videos demonstrating the settings you should change from the defaults and how the X-T5 performs for things like focus speed, burst, stabilization, and high ISOs. Now, compared to some Fujifilm designs, the X-T5 is a utilitarian kind of plane. A few beveled edges, a few rounded corners. And the X-T5 is slightly smaller than the X-T4 and at 557 grams, about 10% lighter. The smallish grips suit a smaller camera. And there's a good assortment of physical controls, menu circle and joystick for navigation on the front. Happy to find the focus mode selector missing from the X-H2s. Six labeled keys, three more unidentified, including the four direction keys, and 11 can be customized from 10 screens of options. ISO and shutter dials, which lock, and EV, which annoyingly doesn't across the top. And the ISO dial has a drive setting collar. The collar under shutter duration selects stills or video. Front and back multi-purpose dials, meaning lots of control without going into the menu. Now, the 3 by 2 aspect 8 centimeter diagonal 1.8 million dot LCD tilts up a lot, down slightly, and then swivels out for portrait mode shooting. Many photographers prefer that over fully articulated. And the 15 millimeter 3.69 million dot OLED viewfinder has a large and comfortable eye cup and a wide range diopter adjustment, more than needed for my prescription. The ports on the left side provide mic in and remote, USB-C and micro HDMI. On the right side, two SD card slots supporting up to SDXC UHS 2V90. The newer high capacity N235 battery goes in the bottom beside the lens centered tripod mount. Battery is rated for up to 740 frames. Now I like the right side menu key. In fact, all of the keys that you'll use while shooting are on the right. Although it would be nice if there were a few more labels for the default settings. Now that we've had a look at the outside, I put it on the tripod to record the rest of this video. Now, turn the camera on. If you've used any Fujifilm camera in the last five years, you'll be immediately at home. But if not, the menu is clearly and simply organized and you won't be unfamiliar for long.
A menu is context sensitive for video, stills, and playback. Images can be taken at three sizes and four aspect ratios. Normal or fine JPEG can be combined with RAW. The higher quality, better compression, high efficiency image format is also available. The shutter has both mechanical, up to 1 over 8,000, and electronic, up to 1 over 180,000 settings, as well as several combinations. The mechanical shutter sound is quite subtle. The electronic has several sound effect options. The LCD cycles through detailed, clean, and viewfinder companion screens. There's an optional large font mode. And lots of options to select which icons are displayed. When you rotate the camera for portraits, so does the display. Fujifilm's exposure control, in the absence of a PASM dial, is unique. When the aperture ring and shutter duration dial are at A, the camera controls both as confirmed by the P. The EV dial makes exposure compensation adjustments. Uh, three up, three down. Then, when the dial's at C, the front dial adjusts up to five stops. Adjust the aperture and the camera switches to aperture priority. Adjust the shutter for full manual control. The EV display then becomes a meter. Now, meter setting, which is only available when face detect is off, is set by pressing the D-pad's top control, or in the menu, where it's called photometry. Now, there's no highlight option, which has started to become standard elsewhere. Shutter dial settings go from 1 second to 1 over 8,000, includes bulb and timer for durations up to 60 minutes. Shutter dial has full stops. For one third up or down, use the rear dial. At 8,000, the back dial takes you up to the highest settings and the maximum, one over 180,000. When the ISO dials at A, there are three auto ISO settings adjusted and selected in the menu. Standard ISO ranges from 125 to 12,800. Set the ISO dial to C and press the front dial for ISO control. With the mechanical shutter, using the dial enables the extended settings, low to 64, high to 51,200. The backside illuminated sensor compensates for the higher pixel density. I'll demo in the performance video post. The front focus switch is also an appreciated and unusual control. Select focus mode, then touch the joystick to access focus. Front dial selects the size, then the joystick selects the area. This is the 117 point selection. Use the menu for 425 points. Touch is available, top right. Shot is tap and snap. AF focuses the touch subject, Area selects the area, then use the shutter to focus. There's no shutter interlock to disable here, so for back button focus, switch to manual and use the AF on key, which works in manual focus mode. Face detection includes eye selection. By default, it's set using the custom key beside the shutter. Then in the menu, subject detection has six settings. Note that these are all mutually exclusive. Continuous supports tracking. Again, I'll demo that in the performance video. Manual focus assists include a dual display with a menu option selecting which has the expanded view. And for expanded view, activate focus check and turn the lens's focus ring. Three other manual focus assists are available in the menu. The video mode's focus has most of the same features, including face detect, but has limited area select. Multi, which is auto area, and area offering six sizes, movable on a 117 point grid. For manual, there's a different focus assist, a focus meter. It's a movable target showing which way to turn green when subject's in focus. Fujifilm's color profile selection is also unique based on analog film types. <laughs> By default, press the left side of the D-pad for the selection screen. There are 10 color film simulations. 
some of which are recommended for video. And three mono, with color filter variations for a total of 20. There are no new film sims in the fifth generation processor. Well, the default key for white balance is the right of the D-pad. Auto white balance includes standard, white, and ambience preferences, the usual suspects, three custom slots, and K settings from 2500 to 10,000 in 10 step increments. These all have a shift adjustment panel. There's a non interactive color saturation control, two color enhancement settings, chrome and chrome blue, both increase color saturation in shadows. For mono simulations, a color tint control that's so extensive the sepia simulation is pretty much redundant. Dynamic range can be adjusted with the dynamic range setting up to 400%, although that requires a minimum ISO of 500. Alternately, derange priority, which I prefer, again, strong only available at ISO 500 and up. And note that this overrides both dynamic range and the tone curve settings. Tone curve, with its interactive display and independent highlight and shadow control, can be a little more versatile without requiring a minimum ISO. And between these three, lots of ways to address wide dynamic range scenes. And there are controls for sharpness, not interactive, and clarity, which is interactive. <laughs> also, smooth skin with weak and strong. Smooth skin isn't available in video mode, neither is clarity or derange priority. Stabilization is continuous by default for stills, another performance video demo. Uh, the new digital teleconverter is available here 1.4 times, changes image size to M, 20 megapixels, two times cycles down to small, 10 megapixels. I don't think this is useful. Might as well crop in post. A quick access to most settings is available by pressing the Q key, which is independent for stills and video, and it can have from 4 to 16 slots, controlling all of the frequently adjusted shooting settings. Drive modes are set using the caller with an assist from the custom key beside the lens. Now there are two settings for burst, cla and cha. Using the key, cla can be set from 3 to 7 frames per second. Cha has 10 and 15, with the mechanical shutter slightly less when using the electronic. Switch to electronic shutter to access three more settings up to 20 frames with a 1.29 crop, a 24 megapixel image. We'll report on the buffer in the performance video. Uh, now, there's a bracket setting on the caller and a slightly awkward menu option to configure them. So first, uh, select which bracket you want. Exposure, ISO, Film Sim, White Balance, Dynamic Range, or Focus. Uh, then, uh, most have configurable control settings. The exposure bracket can be set up to 9 frames, up to 3 stops for a range, as displayed at the bottom. So from 12 stops under to 12 over. I can't think of a situation with 24 stops, but just in case. And there are also options to go only up or down. Manual focus bracket sets the number of frames the distance shift, called step, from one exposure to the next, and the delay between shots, useful if your flash needs time to recharge. Next on the caller, advanced, for a selection of fairly predictable filters set in the menu, and panorama, which is configured on screen, width, and orientation. To the other side of single, HDR, again set in the menu with five options. Additional drive options found in the menu are the self-timer, 2 and 10 seconds, in video mode, 3, 5, and 10. The interval timer intervals from 1 second to 24 hours, and an infinite number of exposures. And a feature I'm seeing here for the first time, external timer. Manual indicates that it's for remote control, but not sure what value this setting adds to that. If you asked for this feature, please comment. Sports Finder requires the mechanical shutter and crops the image, but not the display. So you can see the subject in the viewfinder before it enters the 24 megapixel image frame. 
pre-shot requires electronic shutter and shot mode. It starts buffering when you soft press the shutter key and saves the 10 or so images prior to the full press. Both should switch to the appropriate shutter automatically when selected, uh, but the workaround is to use one of the custom settings. Uh, one more drive on the other caller. Switch to video mode. Now, nearly all video settings are independent. However, the shutter, aperture, ISO, and focus mode aren't electronically controlled, so you'll have to use the manual controls. <laughs> The workaround for this, activate Movie Optimize Control, providing touchscreen settings for shutter, aperture, and ISO. Now, switch between stills and video, and the exposure settings are independent. The context-sensitive menu also changes to video settings. So, this video is recorded internally using 4K HQ, 30 frames, H.265, 10-bit, 422, all intra at 360 megabits per second using the Astia Film Sim. And this is continuous autofocus with Face Eye Detect on. Fujifilm provides the leading edge of video settings for APS-C with many of the features of the flagship X-H2 enabled here. That means both H.264 and H.265 with all intra and long GOP variants at data rates up to 360 megabits. 6.2K, useful for a croppable overshoot at 16x9, 24 or 30 frames, 4K, 16 or 17x9, up to 60 frames, and a high-quality 4K mode with no line skipping. High-speed HD up to 240 frames for 10 times slow motion at 24 frames. Now, there are some crops, 6.2 and 4K HQ is 1.23 at 30 frames, no crop at standard 4K, but 1.14 at 60. Flickerless shutter speeds are available, settings change by a tenth of a second. <laughs> That's very useful. And stabilization can be turned off for use on a tripod. A turn on in-body plus optical and add digital, then in a second menu setting, boost, which optimizes static scenes. No stabilization crop with image and optical. Uh, digital adds 1.1 for standard 4K. Adding boost doesn't change the crop either. Current owners will be pleased by video mode's exposure meter, sorry, photometry, selection capability. And a new feature, a red video recording frame in addition to the existing front and back tally light. Now, the red frame is more useful on a camera with a screen that swivels forward Still appreciated. Fujifilm's menu has improved. It mostly remembers where you were until you configure the My Menu, but it continues to skip over dimmed out options with no help to understand what's wrong. For instance, why is the digital stabilizer setting not available? Only when it's on do you see the help for this one. I needed this information when it was disabled. So, what do you lose over the X-H2 when you save a few dollars? A higher resolution viewfinder, smaller burst buffer, a front-facing screen, digital zoom in video mode, a full-sized HDMI port, headphone port, and ProRes video. Then, uh, there's no optional grip or cooling fan for the X-T5. However, Tascam's XLR adapter will work. Uh, one minor irritant, I do prefer the strap mount on the X-H2s to the earlugs on the X-T5. But for me, and many others, the real reason to get the X-T5 isn't to skimp on a few features and save a few dollars, but to upgrade to 40 megapixels without giving up Fujifilm's excellent physical exposure controls that don't need a PASM dial. Uh, let me add one request. I haven't repeated this one in a long time. Please add some onboard memory to use in an emergency. Maybe you've run out of card space, or having a card issue, or even forgotten the card. So let's dual purpose the buffer memory to save just a few images. As I said, not sponsored. This camera goes back to Fujifilm Canada. They didn't pay me. The support I receive from those of you who've joined this channel as members means that I don't stop in the middle to read you a sponsored ad, nor do I allow YouTube to interrupt my videos with ads.
Now, if you'd like to join that select member group, <laughs> there's a link below, but you could also subscribe or like or comment. I do read and reply to all relevant questions and civil comments. <laughs> Thanks for finding the time to watch today and stay safe. Thank you.